We're here at Sebring. I'm Dan Johnson, and today I'm talking with Art Tarola, who had to truck an airplane down here because you didn't have all the documents yet, but now you have all the documents. Is that right, Art? Yeah, what a relief. <laughs> yeah. It was a little bit of a, a trip coming from Pennsylvania down here with the airplane, but uh, one of our, uh, our partners here in aviation uh, is an airworthiness inspector, and he was able to give me the airworthiness certificate on it, and now we can fly it home. So you can fly this guy home and give yeah. the truck back to the rental company. Yes. Excellent. Well, when you fly home, Art, you're going to do that with a little different engine under the cowl here, right? I am going to be flying in the new IS going deck that engine. All right, Rotax's new model it came out with last year. Yeah, it's got some advantages to it. You don't have a lot of time on it yet, but you know what some of the advantages are. What are the things you like about the engine based on what you've heard, based on what you've already flown in this airplane? Well, I'm going to start with what I felt in the engine. Okay. The first thing I noticed was it was remarkably smooth and quiet. It, it doesn't have a lot of vibration, which you didn't even realize was any other engine until it was gone. <laughs> Especially when you're coming in on landing. I did a landing at Avon Park yesterday, and when I landed, um, I, I had this feeling there was something missing. And it was that little bit of, of, of uh, character that's in that road tax engine. That's a good way to put it. That was missing because this is so smooth. I suppose that's because this is a computer-controlled engine. Uh, it has an electronic control unit on it that meters the fuel. That's the whole part of the fuel injection. Also is constantly checking the engine, I don't know, hundreds of times a second or something very, very often. And that kind of overall control of the engine is a little different. You know, one of the first things that I noticed is that the exhaust gas temperatures were almost identical between cylinders. And, uh, you know, that Which was is not the case on the carburetor version. It is not. You know, anybody who's blown them knows that there's a little bit of variation from cylinder to cylinder. Right. Especially. Not a problem, but the variation's there. No, and it's not much, but these things are right on the, right on the lines, man. It, it, the control unit yeah, does a good job. Yeah, keep it that, that, that computer is always on it there, yeah, so that's yeah, cool. That's true. Uh, it also uses a lot less fuel, they say. I think yeah. their number after a year of evaluation was in excess of 30% less fuel which is pretty demonstrable. You know, there were, I think, three different manufacturers that got to play with these engines about a year before they were released, and uh, they came up with somewhere around 21%, uh, and it turns out in real life here, it's actually better than that. Even better than that. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, my experience with the IS engine, uh, which right now is more than yours, that'll probably change, uh, I typically see Depends on how hard you run the engine, of course, but anywhere from 3.7, 3.8, if I'm running it real easy, to 4.2 or so. Those are pretty precise numbers, but that's how you can get that through something like the Dynon screen. And that's about almost a gallon an hour better or thereabouts than the perfectly good carbureted version, the ULS. Yes. yes. As you know, I just got the airworthiness certificate on it. I did get a chance to go to the local airports around here, do some takeoffs and landings and playing around with it. And this air engine seems faster than the other engines. So the matter. airplane's faster, and I don't know if it's got a little more torque or what exactly has caused that, but it's the same airframe, different engine, and boy, oh boy, is this a sweet, fast, airplane airplane. I had a ball testing it in the uh, showcase this morning. Cool. Well, we're fly you're flying this. IS engine in the Evector Harmony LSA. That's correct. And you told me something I didn't know about the Harmony is it's only available in, in the United States due to regulatory issues in other countries, I suppose. But so this is only a U.S. airplane with this uh, sleek compound wing. The U.S. version is called the Harmony LSA. Uh, they have an RTC that is a European certified version of the airplane. Of course, the other uh, European version is Sport Star, Sport Star Plus. Harmony that is not a Harmony LSA. That's why they put the LSA on it. And one of their earlier models was also called the Harmony. Ah, yes, right. They had a, a very light aircraft for VLA that I think that would yes, fit into. They had a Koala and, uh, and a Harmony. Yeah. And RTC that Art refers to as restricted type certificate. So I'd like you to show us real briefly a couple of the changes to the panel that you've done using oh. some uh, new computer equipment. Sure. And uh, then we'll wrap it up and you can tell us where to get more information about a vector in the United States. Sounds great. Great. Well, now we're looking inside the Harmony LSA with its new IS engine. You're not going to see too much in here, although you should have some lane A and B lighting. Do you have that information? I do. Here? Here's your lane there we A go. and B lighting. We have a lane A and B uh, a switch, a, a, a fuel pump A, B. We have a start switch. We have a push buttons instead of a key to start ah, okay. the engine. 
It's and like a modern have, automobile. We have an emergency switch. So the switches are a little bit different on this one. Because of the IS engine. Because of the IS engine, yeah. Now, some people are fooled a little bit by the lane A, lane B light thing. It's The analogy is uh, left and right mags, but you don't have that same situation on this engine because it's just not the same. Do you check your lane A, B lights as a, in a, in a pre-flight process? I do. I check the lane A, B lights. They're, they're supposed to come on, stay on for a number of seconds, and then go off. And I look to make sure that that's true. Excellent. So it's it's kind of the equivalent of checking that way, but it's the what you're basically doing is there's two lanes of fuel injection and two computer systems running that, and that's what you're checking with the lights. Is that correct? That's correct. Excellent. Well, you got one more little piece of equipment that we've seen a lot of and increasingly in airplanes, and I don't know if Apple Inc. ever planned that it would be such a big hit in airplanes, but in between your Dynons, which you can tell me a little more about, you got another instrument. What's going on here, Art? Uh, well, I have an iPad Mini in the center. Uh, when I just when I configured this airplane, I knew I wanted the Dynons, and the Dynons have just about everything in them. It has the ADS-B in it, the transponders built into it. The only thing that's not built into this particular one is the radio and the intercom. Um, I got this Which one. you can get from Dynon, but you haven't Absolutely. done that in this one, okay. But it gave me the ability to put a radio down here and have a very large open space in the center. Uh, By using the smaller 7-inch versus the 10-inch Dynons, is that what you mean? That's correct. Okay. And not having a radio stack because the transponder's in here and the audio panel is here, so we, don't, we didn't have to stack up radios. Here. Okay. And uh, today, the iPads and the iPad minis are very popular with pilots. And instead of having it on your knee or on a, a RAM mount, it was a perfect uh, opportunity to put it right here. Now, can you get that thing out of there and take it in and uh, do flight planning in your hotel on a trip or something? Yeah, fortunately, this is not that sophisticated a mounting system. It's called Velcro. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so it comes off that easy. You can put your little cover on it. Uh, it's got a plug on the side here that will go into your power okay, port Okay, so here. you can keep it charged while you're flying. It's time to go back in. You're done. Beautiful. That's pretty slick. And you can check your email and watch a movie, too. Yes, you can. Not bad, Art. Well, you've told us a lot about the Harmony LSA with its new IS engine. Congratulations on the approval and Thank you. getting the flyer home instead of driver home. Uh, where else do we go on the web to get more information about Evector in America through you and your uh, cohort's uh, websites? You can get uh, information about my business at www.avflight.com avflight.com we'll put it up on the screen for people where else and in ohio with steve minnick at midwest sport pilot com great and then evector has their own website as well and evector has their own uh, website evectoraircraft.cz there we go so we'll put all that up to help people spell it I've gotten to fly a number of these airplanes and uh, we'll continue to do that. Lots of reporting about Evector on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining Art and I at here at Sebring.